Hi, welcome to the USU Soccer Show. I'm your host, Hillary Kennedy. It's September, which means back to school and back to soccer. September is also Youth Soccer Month. All across the country, people are celebrating the fun, family, friendship, and fitness that makes soccer great. Don't forget to check out youthsoccermonth.org where you can register for some great contests, including the Ball Day giveaway. You can also get some great ideas on how you can join the celebration of Soccer Month in your area. In fact, let's kick the show off by hearing more about Youth Soccer Month. Join U.S. Youth Soccer this September as the nation celebrates Youth Soccer Month. Youth Soccer Month highlights the many benefits of soccer, like fun, family, friendship, and fitness. September is a great time to celebrate Youth Soccer Month. It's the beginning of the school year and it's the beginning of the soccer season and it's a great time for kids to get out, get fit, and get active. I like soccer because it gives me a chance to hang out with friends and learn something new and exercise almost every day. I've got three girls, they all play soccer, um, and really what they get out of the experience, I think really all life lessons are taught in the game of soccer. Uh, you know, they learn how to win uh, in, in good fashion, they learn how to lose in good fashion, they learn sportsmanship, team, uh, team skills. So I think really at the end of the day, um, it's just all the above. They have fun, they learn uh, good uh, life skills out of the game. I like soccer because you can have fun, you can play, you can play outside, you can kick the ball, and you can meet a lot of new people. Regardless of how you celebrate, Youth Soccer Month is about spreading the positive message our sport plays in the lives of America's youth. Visit youthsoccermonth.org to join the celebration. <laughs> Soccer is so much fun, and with some hard work, it can also be very rewarding. This last summer, 10,000 teams started the journey to win the national championship title, and 14 champions were eventually crowned. Let's take a minute to look back at some of the best goals and saves from this summer's national championships.
The road to the national championships is a long one. In fact, the journey to next summer's national championships starts soon with the 2014-2015 National League season kicking off. 160 teams have been hand-selected to compete thanks to their proven track record of success in USU soccer events. 40 of those teams will claim an automatic bid to the 2015 national championships. One of the teams that claimed a coveted spot in the upcoming National League season was Baltimore Celtic. The club is new on the scene and this year went all the way to claim a national championship title. Let's hear more about their journey. Baltimore Celtic started in um, the spring of 2013, uh, a group of players and coaches including myself and, and most of the guys in this group um, decided to leave an academy club in the area um, and start their own club in USYSA. Um, probably about 90 percent of the players and most of the coaching staff um, you know, decided that they could create just as competitive environment outside the academy. Uh, so we moved the players and coaching staff into a new organization um, which again was built from the ground and built from scratch, um, named it Baltimore Celtic and we're now a little bit over a year into the process of building that club. I guess I'd have to say I like how we're a family here at Baltimore Celtic and every team is connected and that's one of the main reasons I think why we came over to Celtic to be more unified and as a club not just individual teams and pretty much just everyone here is looking out for each other and these are all relationships we're going to have for a lifetime, not just after Baltimore Celtics done. Our team is especially close. Um, obviously we saw it in Nationals when we would go down, we uh, instead of giving up we rallied together and kind of relied on each other as family and uh, ended up coming back and winning which is it was huge for us but I don't think we could have done it without each other and these guys they mean the world to me, they're my brothers. We try to um, create a, a family atmosphere where each player and each coach works together, works in conjunction for a common goal, um, and, and works together for, for each other. Um, we create genuine relationships with one another, we legitimately care for one another, um, and we try to improve individually and collectively um, every single day we go out on the field, whether it be training, match, uh, classroom session, um, or anything in between. I can't say that I don't love anyone on our team and I'd do anything for them. I'd play the whole game for any kid next to me and just the way we play as a, as a family, we find ways to win and we just all have heart and we don't stop till last whistle. You know, if you look back through just the run in Nationals, um, the th all three games that we won we were trailing um, against very good teams um, and we won the uh, final in a, in a penalty, uh, penalty shootout. Um, a team that doesn't have a, uh, a really strong resolve um, and a strong personality and mentality um, would not be able to come back in those three games against some of the best teams in the country and would not have the, um, the, the toughness to, to last the penalty shootout against a, an excellent um, Ohio Premier team. Winning the national championship was, uh, was unbelievable. I mean, the feeling that you get when, when everyone storms the field and, and, and everyone's, everyone's there for you, your whole family, your friends, every fan. Every, everyone, that, everyone was there, and it was, it was uh, a once-in-a-lifetime thing. When you look back on, on this year with um, a first-year club um, and what your expectations are you know, in, in 12 months in a, in a calendar year for your organization as a director of coaching, um, and you set out certain goals about you know, getting your teams organized and developing a club philosophy and a club culture um, and creating all the, the, the fundamentals and the cores that will you know, identify your club for hopefully years to come. Um, you have a dream of winning a national championship somewhere in that priority list, um, but it's certainly not at the top. And um, even though I'm a very confident coach and, and more importantly, I believe 100% in my players, um, the fact that we were able to go out in, in 10 months and win a national championship really speaks volumes about the guys on this team. Um, chips were down many times this year. Um, we were down two goals with 13 minutes left in the semifinal of the national championship. Most teams um, at that point would have, would have folded up and, and went home disappointed. Um, but these guys battled back, scored three goals, won that game, were able to win a penalty shootout in the final, and I, I think it, those two results 
you know, in combination with everything in the whole year, um, really says a lot about this group of young men and more importantly, hopefully sets a standard um, for our club next year and, and hopefully many years down the line. It takes a lot of time and effort to make it to the national championship level. That's why U.S. Youth Soccer has teamed up with Nestle Nesquik and soccer stars like Sydney LaRue and Alexi Lawless to share their tips on making it to the top. Hi, I'm Alexi Lawless, a former member of the U.S. men's national soccer team, television analyst, and most importantly, proud soccer dad. As a parent and a former player, I know nutrition plays an important role in performance. So here's some great choices for players before, during, and after games. The day of a game, you want a carbohydrate-rich snack that also includes some protein. Some suggestions are these. Peanut butter and banana sandwich, one of my favorites. Some apples, and maybe some low-fat milk a fruit and yogurt smoothie with low-fat granola. Right before a game, don't eat any protein since it can upset your stomach, but instead go for a carb-rich small snack that can provide quick fuel during the game. Now, during the game, it's important to hydrate. Water's the best. Now a small snack is okay, but keep it simple, like a banana or a low-fat granola bar. After the game, it's important to refill your body with both protein and carbohydrates within 30 minutes after you stop working out. Low-fat chocolate milk is what I recommend after a game because research suggests that it contains the right mix of protein and carbs, so it's perfect for post-game recovery. You work hard in practice, so make sure you get the most out of your body on game day by eating right. Refuel with Nesquik after tough games and practices. Okay, it's time now for a break. When we return, we'll hear about the new Capri Sun Skills Challenge that may be coming to your area. And we'll see what you should be focusing on if you're planning on playing soccer in college. All this and more when we return to the U.S. Youth Soccer Show. U.S. Youth Soccer is the largest youth sports organization in the country and playing provides opportunities for first-time players as well as future superstars. Everybody starts somewhere and for over 3 million players every year, U.S. Youth Soccer is the place to grow and develop. I think really all life lessons are taught in the game of soccer. You know, they learn how to win uh, in good fashion, they learn how to lose in good fashion, they learn sportsmanship, team skills. So I think really at the end of the day, um, it's just all the above. They have fun, they learn uh, good uh, life skills out of the game. I like playing competitive soccer because it gives me something to be really proud of and that I know that I'm putting my effort into something and that I'm really getting results out of it. I love my team and I love playing, so you know the whole thing, it can be hard, but it's 100% worth it and it just gives you something, a purpose in life that you can really put your heart and soul into. Hi and welcome back to the USU Soccer Show. Did you know that 2014 marks the 40th anniversary of USU Soccer? And with Soccer Month happening right now, we thought we'd take a minute to remember what USU Soccer is all about. Happy 40th anniversary, U.S. Youth Soccer. My parents signed me up for a youth league, uh, and I just I, I love running around, and I try and cast my mind back to those days uh, when things get tough. Happy 40th birthday, U.S. Youth Soccer. Happy 40th birthday, U.S. Youth Soccer. Keep it going.
It's that time again. MLS superfan and star of the hit TV show 30 Rock, Judah Friedlander, is sharing some of the awesome and unusual stories of MLS history with our viewers. Let's sit back and enjoy a little MLS Storytime Theater. Welcome to MLS Storytime Theater. I am El Campeon del Mundo, Judah Friedlander. Today's story is called The Matador and the Mohawk. Luis Hernandez, AKA El Matador, is to this day the greatest goal scorer for Mexico in World Cup history. And in 2000, when MLS was still a baby, the league made its first big money deal by signing Hernandez for many millones de dólares. The league wanted Hernandez to play in Los Angeles where he would attract millones de supporters to the Rose Bowl to help grow the new league. The problem was that under league rules in the early days, the Galaxy were already at their limit of foreign allocations. NAFTA was not gonna solve this problem. FIFA overrules NAFTA. To work it out, the Galaxy were required to put two players, including a neatly coiffed youngster from the South named Clint Mathis, into a dispersal draft where the teams with the worst records could take them. The Metro Stars picked Mathis and El Matador was allowed to join the Galaxy. No one was happier about this than Mathis, who started scoring goals like crazy and flashing his I Love New York undershirt in celebration. Clint set an MLS record with five goals in one game, was named the MLS Best 11, led the Metros from worst to first in the East, and scored the 2001 MLS Goal of the Year. And now Mathis at the other end on the counter. Mathis goes up against Ryan Suarez, gets by Suarez, has help from Ramos. Mathis takes it himself into the 18. Oh! Within two years, the Luis Hernandez experiment in LA was over. El Matador was back in Mexico, while Clint was on the cover of Sports Illustrated with the headline, America's Best. Not exactly the poetry of world champion, but good for you, Clint. Mathis celebrated by shaving his hair into a mohawk and scoring a huge goal for the U.S. in the 2002 World Cup against home side South Korea. I can still remember the announcers screaming, that's why he's here! and it still brings chills to me today. And MLS eventually joined Real Salt Lake. And in the 2009 MLS Cup Final, when Real and the Galaxy went to penalties, Clint got them again, scoring the first goal in the shootout, propelling Real to their first MLS Cup. So where's the lesson in all of this? Is it in the Mohawk? Is it in the undershirt? Is it in the money? You're gonna have to figure that out yourself. You can't always rely on the world champion to do all the work for you. You can do it. El Campeon Del Mundo believes in you. I am the world champion, Judah Friedlander. Join me next time for MLS Storytime Theater. The fall is a really good time to dig a little deeper into your search for a college program that you think might fit your skills and personality best. Let's hear from former college coach and current USU Soccer Director of Coaching, Sam Snow, on what you should be focusing on this month. If you're a high school senior and have a pretty good idea of the colleges or universities you would like to submit applications to, now is the time if you haven't already done so. Be sure to keep an eye on application and scholarship deadlines. Many colleges have hard dates in place to receive applications and apply for scholarships. Once those deadlines have passed, you will not be considered for application and or scholarship opportunities. Keep in mind, the more competitive the college is in admissions, the earlier you need to apply. Colleges typically have a pool of money that is used when awarding scholarship and or grants. The earlier you apply, the better chance you have at receiving a larger portion of funds from that resource. Once a pool of funds is depleted, it will not be replaced until the following year for award distribution. Getting to the collegiate level in soccer takes hard work, determination, and heart. But some kids just love the game of soccer because, well, it's so much fun. U.S. Youth Soccer recently teamed up with Capri Sun Roaring Waters to add a little bit of hard work and a lot of fun to tournaments around the country. I'm at the Capri Sun Skills Challenge today. Um, I am doing a soccer challenge 
and you had to do juggling, skill, shooting accuracy, 10 yard run, and then a challenge where you had to do, you had to go around the flags. So uh, basically we've got kids uh, 6 to 12, U6 to U12, participating in a multifaceted skills challenge course, uh, basically testing their speed, agility, and their accuracy. My favorite part was the um, ball control. I liked it because you like kind of try to control the ball and that's kind of what I try to work on for, for me playing soccer. So it, it helped me a lot. It's really fun because it warms me up for my next game and it gets me ready. Really the objective with the uh, Capri Sun Skills Challenge course is to create a fun environment. Uh, that's really what all, that's what USU Soccer is all about. That's why we love the partnership, uh, is, is being able to bring the kids a fun, kind of uh, competition free. I mean, they're competing with themselves, but really everybody's a winner. And at this Skills Challenge course, uh, they're not only uh, working on finessing their skills, uh, finessing uh, their ability as a soccer player, but they're also learning things like uh, sportsmanship, teamwork, they're encouraging each other. Um, basically all the skills that they're learning on the soccer field, we're helping them hone those uh, with the skills challenge and it's just fun at the end of the day. We right, did so. accuracy challenge, there was poles that you had to dribble around, um, a sprint and kick, and juggling. If I got to do this again, I would try to um, control the ball more for juggling because I kind of was all over the place with it, so. <laughs> the partnership between USU Soccer and Capri Sun is a beautiful one. Uh, soccer, is, youth rec soccer is the largest growing youth rec sport in the country. Capri Sun, everybody knows and loves it. So the kids test their skills in our skills challenge course. And at the end of it all, they get an ice cold Capri Sun. I mean, basically everybody's a winner in the end at the USU Soccer Capri Sun Skills Challenge. Have you sent in your goal or save of the year for the national contest? Get your video in by December 1st to be considered. We want to give all of the great goals and saves of 2014 a chance to win. Well, that's our show for this month. Thanks again for watching. If you have a story you want to see on the show, send us an email at theshow at ususoccer.org. Be sure to check out usoccermonth.org to see all of the great things happening during September, including daily contests and ways that you can raise money for you and others to play soccer. To watch this and previous shows, be sure to check out our YouTube page at youtube.com slash USU Soccer. I'm Hillary Kennedy, and until next time, get out and get in the game.